Namaste. So today, I'd like to take a little snapshot of a conversation between Ramana Maharshi and the famous scholar Evans Wentz. Evans Wentz, of course, is well known as one of the first people to introduce Tibetan Buddhism to the West. And he also wrote the preface for Yogananda's book, uh, Autobiography of a Yogi. So what happens when he meets someone like Ramana Maharshi? Let's take a look. Devotee, which time is most suitable for meditation? Maharshi, what is time? Devotee, tell me what it is. Maharshi, time is only an idea. There is only the reality. Whatever you think it is, it looks like that. If you call it time, it is time. If you call it existence, it is existence, and so on. After calling it time, you divide it into days and nights, months, years, hours, minutes, etc. Time is immaterial for the path of knowledge. But some of these rules and disciplines are good for beginners. <laughs> like you. <laughs> Ramana, <laughs> Ramana could be very satirical at times. And, uh, of course, this is a classic encounter between a scholar and a realized being. I'm reminded of the Zen story about Nanin. Nanin one time received a professor from, well, Oxford University which is where Evans Wentz was a professor also. And, uh, of course, the guy was just bursting with ideas and questions. So Nanin said in typical Japanese fashion, you must be tired from your journey. Please sit down and have a cup of tea. <laughs> of course, in Zen culture, have a cup of tea means you're asleep. You need to wake up. <laughs> so uh, Nanin prepared the tea. And when he served it to the professor, he started pouring into the cup. And even though the cup was full, he kept pouring. And so the tea was going all everywhere. The professor said, stop, can't you see the cup is full? And Nanin said, yes, just like you are so full of ideas. <laughs> I would like to give you Zen, but first you have to empty your cup. Well, you could argue that Zen means to empty your cup. So we have a very similar encounter here. The great doctor from the West comes to India expecting to be uh, given knowledge. But instead, Ramana makes fun of his knowledge. Huh? What is time? You want to know the time to meditate? Well, what is time? He then attacks the assumption in the question. And the assumption is there is a rule about when to meditate. And of course, the real rule about when to meditate is all the time. One should be aware of the reality at all times. And what is the reality? <laughs> the self. The self is everywhere, in everything. By measuring things in relation to the self, there is no time. 
There is no space, no dimension, no movement, no change, no transformation, etc. So Evans Wentz gets put in his place <laughs> quite nicely by Ramana Maharshi. And what is time? And of course, a physicist would answer it differently. Uh, any knowledge specialist would answer it in their own way. But as we spoke about in a previous uh, video, knowledge is the booby prize. Even knowledge of spiritual things. And yet we see that without knowledge, realization doesn't take place. Or if it does, it's only due to the presence of an enlightened master. Previously in this conversation, <laughs> Evans Wentz was asking about meditation. And he says, is, is meditation helpful? And Ramana replied, well, it can help, but it's really secondary. The real cause of enlightenment is the presence of the master. So in other words, here you are in the presence of a master, and what are you doing? Fishing for knowledge. You know, if, if you approach a master and you want something less than enlightenment, of course he's going to make fun of you. Of course he's going to belittle your so-called knowledge. Huh? Knowledge is only the precondition for enlightenment. But the real cause of enlightenment is the mercy of the master. So, you know, people have all kinds of bizarre ideas about this. The neo advaitins think simply by reading books you can get the knowledge to become enlightened. But enlightenment is not knowledge. Enlightenment is being, pure being, and pure awareness without an object, unconditioned, absolute, boundless, huh? boundaryless, which means unlimited, infinite, without an end. So, so when this guy comes to Ramana, and says, what is the best time for meditation? He, he is now on the tertiary level. Huh? Enlightenment is the primary. Knowledge about enlightenment or meditation is the secondary level. And now he wants to know about time? Come on. Here he has the greatest opportunity. But what does he do? He wants to fill his cup with knowledge instead of emptying it in the presence of the master and getting what's really important. So, of course, Ramana makes fun of him. He, he is satirically inclined anyway. Huh? The, the enlightened ones always are because they see what a com comedy and tragedy this material world is. Right? The comedy of it is that people are running around thinking they know what it's all about, thinking they are the doer, the owner, the knower, the enjoyer, and so on. Right? But actually, they are none of these things. These roles and are masks that hide the real self. And people take them so seriously. I am the manager of quality control for XYZ Corporation or whatever. Huh? I am Mr. So-and-so. I am born in this country of this family and this religion and this political party and so on and so on and so on. These are all masks 
They hide the reality. They take us away from our real self and put us in a box, which is limited in space and time. So, of course, the, the enlightened being is bigger than any box, bigger than beyond any category. So, as soon as you mention time, what, what is time? You know, I can imagine he, he was not asking the question rhetorically, like, what is time? He didn't expecting an answer. He was asking the question to belittle the idea, well, what is time? Time is nothing, just a thought. But he lets drop a very important concept that however we look at the reality is how we see it. How you look is what you see. If you investigate the reality or measure the reality in terms of time, which is just a thought, then you're going to see all kinds of time. Years, months, days, hours, seconds, milliseconds, microseconds, <laughs> whatever. Or yugas. See, it just depends on your view. If you view the world in terms of consciousness, you're going to see a jagrat consciousness, where the world appears real. Then you're going to see other kinds of consciousness. Uh, svapna consciousness, which is dreams. Sushupti consciousness, which is uh, nothingness, deep sleep. And Turiya, the fourth type of consciousness, which is consciousness of consciousness. You see? So it gets really meta. <laughs> but the basic thing is that the world appears as we view it. If we measure it according to time, we see time. If we measure it according to space, we see space and so on. Distance or other qualities. But the reality has no qualities. The reality is free from quality because all qualities are limiting. Day and night, here and there, up and down. See, they're all separated from their opposites, at the very least. And, of course, there are more factors as well. So, instead of looking at the, the reality and trying to limit it by measuring it in terms of conditions, thoughts, rather, we should just relax and accept the reality as it is in its fullness, in its completeness, and not try to make these artificial boundaries. We don't know, or we can't know, the reality, because the reality is bigger than knowledge. The reality is being. And so by being the reality is the only way one can know the reality. And this of course, is the perfection of enlightenment. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.